When ski touring, I used to pride myself in sussing out convexities because that's where many slab avalanches start, right? Well, before I try to identify where triggering is most likely, let's break down the terrain. A convexity is where the slope gets steeper while you're traveling down the fall line. So there are two parts to a convex slope, the convexity near the top and the steeper slope below the convexity. Let's look at how these features can affect the following stages of rider triggered slab avalanches. One, the skier starts a crack in the weak layer under the slab. If the crack is long enough, two, it propagates outwards, including upslope from the trigger point. Three, at some point, sometimes on the convexity, the crown fractures and the slab slides downslope. To see where triggering is most likely, let's look at how slope angle affects these three stages. One, on steeper slopes, riders turn more often. With each turn across the slope, they apply more stress to the snowpack and are more likely to crack the weak layer. In this amazing model and in some avalanches, including fatal avalanches, the avalanche is triggered where the slope is not steep. Two, according to this paper, after five or so meters of upslope crack propagation, the crack shifts into high gear. This transition to super shear propagation is more likely on steeper slopes. The component of gravity pulling the slab down the slope, the orange arrows, is less where the slope is less steep. There is friction in the cracked weak layer just behind the crack tip, the green arrows, but we don't know how or if it changes with slope angle. However, the decrease in downslope pull where the slope is less steep may contribute to crown fracture often being at the convexity. The physical explanation for fractures often being at the convexity is not strong, but we have observations, lots of them. I said often because there are important exceptions. For example, the crown of this hard slab avalanche is on the ridge at the top of the slope. So on steeper slopes, riders who turn across the slope are more likely to start cracks in weak layers. Also, steep slopes favor a transition to super shear crack propagation, which then makes further upslope propagation more likely. This means that triggering is more likely on the steeper slope than at the convexity. Also, the crown fracture is usually where the crack in the weak layer stops spreading upslope. But why do discussions about root selection often focus on convexities and convex slopes? Well, the trigger point is often hidden beneath the slab on the steeper slope, but the highly visual crown fracture, often at the convexity, grabs our attention. However, recognizing convexities is useful for root selection. It's a way of identifying the steep slopes below convexities. Mark Pichet has pointed out that the light change at convexity is easier to see from a distance or in poor light than the steep slope below convexities. You can find a longer video about human triggering on convex slopes by searching for video convex slab avalanche.